if you have got yourself a whole load of these devices that just seem to be piling up and collecting because they keep going wrong, it's the switch mode. It's this end that's causing you the problem. And you can pretty much put almost any little power supply on the back of that that you might have. You can see here that I've gone ahead and screwed one of those bad boys to the wall so that I can literally slide in my battery. And then in the background there with a little bit of luck, you'll be able to see the green LED flashing to indicate that everything's charging. Hello everyone, yes indeed. We're actually in the workshop on the workbench, can you believe it? And what I wanted to do today, getting straight into it here, having cleaned up the shed, is these Black & Decker chargers that charge these lithium 18 volt cells have a horrible tendency of failing. I've bought an awful lot of Black & Decker equipment and uh, I have strimmers, chainsaws, drills, all 18, all powered by these lithium 18 volt cells here. And the problem that I'm facing is that these chargers just seem to give up the ghost. Now, um, I've figured out what it is, and actually what it is, and I don't know why I'm opening this one, it's actually, <laughs> here's one I prepared earlier, it's actually uh, the switch mode power supply that exists in here. Um, it says 8 to 20 volts at 400 milliamp hours, and uh, it just stops producing voltage for some reason. The switch mode inside the little plug dies. I've found a solution for this. <laughs> Uh, it might not it might not be everybody's solution but the ultimate solution really is is just to cut these things off and chuck them away uh, pliers not pliers cutters there we go another one god so um get rid of that side of things and uh in cable here what we've got is we've got one cable with a little stripe on it uh, which is this cable right here and the guy with the stripe or the indicator on it is actually a positive cable and uh, the guy that's purely black is the negative and you can put anything in here from 8 to 20 volts so if you've got a little solar panel or you've got an alternative power source you can go ahead and hook this up. For instance, this guy here, sorry about putting the cable in here, but this guy here, I've got hooked up to my solar panel, which is up on top of the shed. And ultimately then, all of my equipment now is charged through the solar panel on top of the shed. Uh, and uh, in fact, I'm gonna set up another one of those right now. So um, let me show you what I've set up. Let's have a quick look and see what's inside one of these guys first. I forgot to tell you, <laughs> these, um, these guys have got security bits inside them. Uh, so they're little Torx security bits. And they're not just standard Torx, but they've got the pin in the middle of them. So uh, you need special screwdrivers in order to get into them. So I just thought, well, sod it, I'll uh, go ahead and go ahead and drill out the, uh, drill out the screws. Uh, and then hopefully with a little bit of help from a small screwdriver. Look at this, look how organized we are in here. You get a little screwdriver and you just pop that bad boy in there, put a little bit of pressure on things. And with a little bit of luck, oh, there she goes. That's one open, one end open. And what we've got in here, if we just pop that off, is a charge control PCB. And this little PCB here quite happily pops out, as does the cable. Just put the enclosure to one side and let's zoom in slightly on the PCB. There it is. So this is the charge PCB, uh, well, the charge control PCB. It's a little double-sided unit. It's got uh, couple of little microcontrollers on it and uh, a few little FETs, stuff like that, in order to make sure that it doesn't overcharge 
your lithium-ion cell. So uh, you can quite literally just unplug this cable and you've now got, so you've got the ability to be able to use this now to charge your drill batteries. So uh, if we just pop that out of its enclosure, stick the cable back in. The cable can only go in one way around. It's got a little uh, a tab on it that makes sure that you can't get it in the wrong way around. And then, boom, there it is. So what I've done is I've bolted that to the wall and I've connected the other end of it to a solar panel. And uh, when the sun is shining, my lithium battery cells are on charge. And in fact, better than that, I also have the ability to be able to charge my lithium cells from a charge battery bank. Let me show you. If you have got yourself a whole load of these devices that just seem to be piling up and collecting because you, <laughs> because they keep going wrong. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the switch mode. It's this end that's causing you the problem. And you can pretty much put almost any little power supply on the back of that that you might have. You've probably got an old router power supply or something like that kicking around, and that will do the job. Don't buy any more of these Black & Decker chargers. If you've already got that bit, go ahead and reuse it. I'm sure you've got the technical skill set to be able to do that. So this here is my solar battery pack, and this sits here and gets charged up by the solar cells on top of the shed. And if I just plug this light in over here, oops, there we go. Hopefully you can see things a little bit better. Now, with a little bit of luck, you can see here, I'll get rid of this. You can see here that I've gone ahead and screwed one of those bad boys to the wall so that I can literally slide in my battery. And then in the background there, with a little bit of luck, you'll be able to see the green LED flashing to indicate that everything's charging. There we go. So there's one idea. That's the way I've gone. I'm sure you guys can find a, another little switch mode power supply to replace that a broken Black & Decker switch mode that's built into the plug socket. Anyway, here it is, the workbench. Fantastic, all solar powered, absolutely loving it. As always, thanks ever so much for watching. Take care, have a wonderful, wonderful week and weekend. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. Make sure you give us a thumbs up and uh, uh, stay safe. We look at a surge in experimentalism in British music. Most commercial artists have seen dwindling revenues.